Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the third tutorial of how to create a barrel. In this video, we will cover how to make the metal strips. So we've already done the wood, now it's time for the metal. This is gonna require some specularity, some metalness, some roughness, it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so next we need to start talking about what, how to create those metal strips and also how to create those lines. So how do we know where to select those metal strips? Well, you, let's use the UVs to help us. So the metal strips, according to reference, are you know pretty much at the top of the barrel and along here. So if I take a look at my edges, and then if I want to take a look at my UVs, I can actually kind of judge where these um, metal strips are gonna be. So going back into Photoshop, I'm going to create some metal strips. So I'm gonna create a new layer I'm going to start off up here and just kind of create one strip and it doesn't really matter what color it is right now. I'm just trying to figure out where these are located. So shift backspace using the foreground color. I'm going to deselect. I'm just going to make a couple of selections here. A shift backspace. This is the foreground. Click OK. There's one right smack in the center of the barrel. And then at the bottom. And here. So again, I'm just trying to kind of get an idea where these things are located. So let's save. Back into Maya. Here, reload. And I think that's not bad. Might want to scoot this one up a little bit. These guys can be scooted up. This one can be maybe slightly bigger. But I think I've got a pretty good... So hold make a selection, just kind of scoot these up a little bit. Control D. Make a selection again. Maybe scale this one up a little bit. With that Control T. And I think the other ones were okay actually. This one probably should be a little closer to this one. Let's save. Control S is the shortcut. Again, lots of shortcuts. Reload. All right, let's get this one still closer this way. And I think this one is a little small, so I'm going to just scale it up a little bit. Don't forget to save. Might want to turn off that UVs. Save again. Reload. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Cool. All right, uh, going back into Photoshop, let's go and grab some metal. Now we want some rusty metal. So I already have some metal for you guys. Grab this one. I like this one because it's looking kind of metallic already. And let's get rid of these guys here. Okay, so there is shininess, which we're going to have to fix. But let's go ahead and make a selection. Be careful, you don't want to grab these things because that's it's going to be a little distracting. Control copy, control paste, bring it down. Now this is a close up, so just keep that in mind that this is going, we're, we are definitely going to have to alter it, so, um, but this should give us a, uh, a start. And what we can do is called a clipping mask. So if you right click on the layer, and you say create clipping mask, you're gonna notice that I can quickly, using the lines that I pre-made, it will actually almost mask them out, which is really nice because I get to, um, if I need to move this white lines, I can. And you can see it's live through the, through the texture. I'm okay where they're at right now, but it's just something really interesting to keep a note of. So let's change this to metal one. These are going to be my um, metal stripes. And we can save just because it's kind of fun to see how this evolves. Let's reload. And you can see that we're getting that metal look. And lucky for us, it's already rusty and it's got some scratches. So that's really cool. Okay, going back. Now, we might be happy with this, but we should probably kind of break it up a little bit more just because, you know, it's fun. 
So let's make a selection. I'm going to make a bigger selection. Again, control C. Go back to here, control V. I'm going to move this up. And if you're a little lost because it it actually pasted as a clipping mask, if you want to get rid of it, you just like move it. And I can just kind of move this around first. And then what I can do is either right click on it and create a clipping mask, or I can just drag it in the middle, but that works as well. So once again, I like to look at this and see what type of effect it has. If darken works for me, maybe I want to multiply and make it darker. That is crazy. Um, darker color may work. Uh, this one's kind of nice because it's kind of changing the colors a lot, lighten. Um, I have a tendency to just use overlay or multiply. That's usually my go-to, so you can see the difference. And then I can just kind of reduce the opacity. So again, it's kind of helping break things up a little bit. Now let's see, what if we really wanted to get rusty? Something really gross like this. Let's grab this. I'm not interested in the leaking, um, but let's uh, paste it, Control-V. And I'm going to show you some fun things. Now that we know how to overlay and stuff like that, it's now time for you to learn how to use masking. So masking is, I kind of already showed you a little bit at the bottom here. Masking just means that we are going to use a black and white image with grayscale, and that will give us a way to kind of break things apart so we can see some things and not see some things using without deleting anything. So there's a lot of tutorials that will show you how to erase things, but we don't really want to do that because it's permanent. And so if you mess up or if director goes, hey, I really want more rust here or I want something else over there, you're going to have some problems because now we have an issue because we erase it permanently. But by using um, this masking process, we'll be able to control it. So that's one of the reasons why I brought in this type of mask. So I'm going to bring it up into Photoshop. We have that, which I like. Um, we also have these as well, which we can use, but I'm gonna use the first one. So again, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna grab this. So it's a, instead of using just shapes, we're gonna be using a texture that's been converted into black and white and using that. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna click on this little guy right here, which is gonna create a mask. And we're gonna go to channels. And you'll see that layer two mask is select. Click on this little guy right here this little eyeball and press the V, you can actually move this around like an image. Now, it may not look like much is happening, but it's basically we are pasting a black and white image into your mask. So if I turn this off, you're going to notice that it actually keeps the image where it's transparent and anywhere red, or in this sense it's red, you'll be able to know exactly where the mask is going to be revealed. So this is really nice because we'll be able to take this texture map and use it to create a nice broken layer, like actually break up the, the rust. You also notice that in layer two, the mask, and let's go ahead and call this rust because it's kind of weird going, calling it. So the rust is now visible wherever that texture was. Now I can always go back, click on this mask, go to your channels, reveal it, and we can maybe move, whoops, we can move the mask down. So anywhere that you see, you can see through this, anything red you won't be able to see and anything that you can see will see right through it. So that's kind of nice. So that's the nice thing about black and white images. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and bring it down and put it into a clipping mask. So again, right click, create clipping mask, and now you have your rust. If you like, go ahead and do a control J, lift, move it around, control T, might want to flip it, flip it vertically, kind of bring it down a little bit, press enter, right click, create clipping mask. And so now it only affects that particular area, which is kind of neat. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Let's save, go over here, reload, and there we go. It's starting to look really rusty, really cool. All right, uh, let me grab this rust. Again, control J. Now I have a bunch of it. I'm going to scroll down. Again, control T. You might want to just just flip it just to break up the so it doesn't look too repeating. And maybe move things around a little bit so it's not so perfect. 
Maybe it can be a little rustier at the bottom. Something like that. And I think I'm happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and grab all of these layers. This metal strip with everything else. Let's make a folder. And we're going to call this metal. I'm actually going to grab these guys too, put it in here. This is going to be called wood. And we are on our way. It's looking pretty cool. Okay, so we got the wood. We got this. Let's go ahead and add some drip. Let's grab this drip map. I'm going to control A, control C, control V. It's a huge drip map. Let's go ahead and scale it down. And what's really nice about this drip is that any t anything that water has a tendency to accumulate and gather in at the bottom of things and then drip down and stain. So this map is actually very handy because it already looks like it's just a stain. Like it's going to stain the wood below it. So I'm going to call this drip map. And I'm going to overlay. That didn't work. Let's go to multiply. And uh, one of the biggest things is that this needs to be significantly, it has to be high contrast. So I go to normal mode. You'll notice that it's, you, we can see the drip, but it's not really that high contrast. So what we need to do is change the levels. Now I'm going to go to image adjustment levels. And what levels does is that this is the white, this is the black, and you can notice that most of the color happens right here in the center. So what I can do is crunch these values so that I can get a higher contrast. Now this is permanent, so just keep that in mind. And now if I go to multiply, I'm getting a much better effect. Now you can see this line here, which is gonna bug me so I'm going to I could use a soft eraser but again that's a permanent it it really damages the image like permanently so I'm gonna use a mask click on the mask grab a nice soft brush scale it using the little brackets or up there whichever you like and using black we can kind of paint that away soft smoothly there you go if it's too high contrast, which I'm starting to think that it is, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the opacity a little bit. And then we can use this, Control-J, bring it down, Control-T, right click, flip horizontal, right? So again, it breaks up the textures. We don't need the same repeating texture over and over. Control-J again, bring it down, maybe shift things around. Control J, move it to the right like a duplicate. Something like that. So it kind of breaks things up a little bit. Control E, preserve. All right. Maybe scale it a little bit so the drip is a little more dramatic. Control J again, bring that one to the top. Maybe move it, scoot it, scoot it the other way, something like that. And let's save and see what that looks like. So again, this is what it looked like before. Rusty, kind of gross. Let's go over here, reload, and there we go. It's starting to look really old and worn down, which is exactly what we want. It's pretty neat. All right, we're almost done. We're missing one key component. And those are the lines. So I've got my drip. I'm going to grab these guys, call this drip mask or drip group if I want to be specific. So create a new layer. I'm going to make a very small selection here. And then since this is black, shift backspace using the foreground, click OK, control D, and I have a line. Now it may be a little strong, but we're going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to call this line. And let's see if we can go ahead and just kind of move things around. Now, Control-J, and then just moving it. So again, some are going to be bigger, some of them are going to be thinner, so just kind of keep that in mind. So once I have a group that I'm comfortable with, I can select all these lines, Control-E, 
right? That's going to merge them. So select all the layers, control E, control J, and then you can move them around and it'll be a lot faster. Control J. Control J. Something like this. Let's save. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. I'm just going to reduce the opacity just a tiny bit. And let's clean this up a little bit. Let's grab these guys again. Select all the layers. Control E is going to merge everything. I'm going to just clean it up and just delete it. I'm not going to need those bottom lines. Uh, actually, before I do that, I noticed this little gap down here. So I'm going to undo all of these merges and I'm going to double check to make sure that these actually intersect at the bottom. So that's going to be really important. So keep those, an eye on those details. So notice that by deleting something, I almost screwed it up. All right. So now that we have this, we are starting to look pretty good. I'm going to just put it in folders and just call these lines. Got a little nervous when I erased it. Okay, let's grab these lines here and let's see if these need it. I'm going to scale these up a little bit. I'm going to save and see what that looks like. We've been focusing so much on we really don't look too much at this area here. So that's that's OK. I'm going to fade them out a little bit more. So got all of these lines. I'm going to actually control E that one. And there we go. These are going to be top bottom lines. And I'm going to fade them away just so they're not so strong. All right, it's looking pretty nice. All right, now that we have finished the rust and the lines of the barrel, it is time to make this a little bit more unique and personal by adding a little something at the top of the barrel. So right now it is pretty plain and I really wanna make sure that we have something unique about it. So in the next tutorial, use the techniques that we learned in this video tutorial to create a unique logo for the barrel. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned a lot. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and share. And of course, subscribe to my channel. That would be amazing. And of course, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download this barrel and the texture so you can follow along. And you will also find free eBooks, free tutorials, and free downloads. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will see you next time.